Hi, I'm Anna Carey Flint and I did my project on the elaboration theory. The elaboration theory was created by Charles Regaluth back in the late 1970s while he was a, a doctoral student at Brigham Young University. Since then, he has published 11 books and over 160 articles and chapters on instructional design methods and practices. The elaboration theory has seven key components, and they're listed to the left there. Regalu provides the instructional design diagram to the right. The elaboration theory really only deals with the organization of instruction and that it has to be complex content. It's not just a single topic. It's how to organize a unit or a whole course. The elaboration theory is kind of a conglomeration of the knowledge base of the time on the cognitive learning and some of the other instructional theories. So one thing that really stands out to me is the elaborative sequence. So I will be spending the majority of this presentation on that first key component of the elaboration theory. So we have the elaborative sequence. Regalou provides a great analogy for this theory, and he compares it to using a zoom lens. So I've come up with an example to hopefully make the elaboration theory and especially the elaborative sequence very clear. We start with what is called an epitome. You can think of the epitome as looking at the whole picture where you don't necessarily notice the details or you don't go in depth. You have the most fundamental, general and simple, concrete ideas. The content to include in an epitome is determined by identifying the concepts that best subsume all of the content in the instruction as well as other highly relevant content such as learning prerequisites which we'll address a little later. For this example we're looking at a picture. In a lesson you would be taking the fundamental principles and teaching them at the application level. So epitomies are really much more than a preview or a summary. It involves teaching these main concepts, using examples, and then providing practice for learners so they can connect the information to prior knowledge. So for our example, I have a picture from a Richard Scarry book. So after you have your epitome, you have what Regalou coined an elaboration. And there's different levels of elaboration. So here would be a level one elaboration. It's the first examination of details in the content matter. A level one elaboration usually does not contain all of the detailed information you want your learners to, to know, but it gives them more details than the epitome on a certain aspect of the content. So a level one elaboration for our picture would be something like this, where you zoom in on a, a specific part of the content. So for this one, it would be and how the boat would speeds up and slows down. Once you've taught the, the first elaboration, then you would go back and zoom back out, zoom your lens back out, and look at the picture as a whole again. So that way you're relating these smaller chunks of information to the entire picture. So here might be another level one elaboration where the people stay and dine and live on the boat while they're at sea. So basically you have this complex content and you break them down into manageable lessons called elaborations. So the learner should be familiar with the most general concepts such as people are on the boat, people are on the boat for a long time, and the boat has to move and navigate. So we've looked at our level one elaborations. Now, a level two elaboration might look something more like this, where you go even more in depth and the complexity increases. We know that the boat needs to move in, from our epitome. Then we had our level one elaboration. Now we're looking specifically at the engine room. This is when you could go into detail about how the engine works, etc. And you could go more and more in depth as it just depends on what level of complexity you're trying to achieve with your learner. And of course, you bring it back out and you look at the whole picture. So after going through all the elaboration ones and tying them all together, you go deeper into elaboration levels two, three, four, etc. until you've reached the level of complexity 
you want your learners to achieve. So this is an example to show Regaluth's analogy of a Zoom's lens, and this sums up elaborative sequence. One important thing about the elaboration theory is that initially Regaluth looked at three different knowledge structures. Conceptual, which contains types, kinds, and it can be tables or matrices of these. He also talked about procedurals, which contains steps. Sometimes they have to be done in order or steps to make decisions. And then there's theoretical, which shows relationships between principles. Because he recognized these three knowledge structures, he integrated these into the elaboration theory to be able to address all three of these knowledge structures. So he does talk about how epitomes and definitely the organization of content would be influenced by the type of knowledge structure you're trying to build for your students. These knowledge structures play an important role in the elaboration theory because it plays into the second key component of the elaboration theory, the learning prerequisite sequence. A learning structure or knowledge structure, the three that are on the screen, show the prior knowledge that is required to learn a new concept. Each knowledge structure above has critical components or prior knowledge that must be present in the learner before new concepts can be learned. Therefore, these three structures include and identify the prior knowledge that is necessary for the learning to be effective. The simplifying conditions method, or the SCM, was integrated into the elaboration theory in the 1990s. The SCM is designed to organize procedural, heuristic, or a combination of both tasks. So it's a task analysis. Um, it's a task analysis for sequencing the context. The next key component is the summarizer, and then it's the synthesizers. And I'll put these two together because they have similar roles in some respects. So the summarizers are used to review the content covered in the instruction. A good summarizer would provide succinct statements for the concepts being reviewed, a memorable example, and a formative assessment, such as a self-check. Um, a synthesizer is meant to help students synthesize the information that has been presented by relating the different parts of the content, create a deeper meaning of the ideas, and relating the information learned to a larger picture. There's two types of summarizers and synthesizers. The first kind would be the internal. So the internal summarizers and synthesizers would occur at the end of each lesson. The within set summarizers and synthesizers address the concepts that have been taught in a set of lessons. So if you look at the diagram presented on your screen, you can see how the different sets of lessons can be combined. So the dotted lines here, this could be a set of lessons where you would do a within summarizer or synthesizer. If they've completed lesson 1.2.2, they might have done a summarizer and a synthesizer just over this lesson. And then once you branch out and go down to another el elaboration, then you would do a within summarizer and synthesizer. Another key component of the elaboration theory is the utilization of, an, of analogies. Analogies can be used to relate difficult, complex concepts to things that a student or learner understands, such as the example on the screen. The next key component of the elaboration theory is the cognitive strategy activator. Cognitive strategy activators can be embedded in the instruction, so the learner uses a cognitive strategy unconsciously or it can be straightforward asking them to perform the cognitive task consciously. Regaluth and Stein in their 1983 text also note the importance of implicitly teaching cognitive strategies so learners will know how and when to employ them in learning. Learner control is another key component. Regaluth gives some examples of how instruction organized with the elaboration instructional theory can allow for some learner control and student-centered instruction. Control over content can easily be done through elaborative sequencing because it can allow the learner to make an informed decision on which aspects he or she would like to gain more knowledge about so they may be able to select the elaborations they want to view. The learner could also be given the choice of completing summarizers and or synthesizers and to have a choice in instructional components and employ the cognitive strategies that fits the student's metacognition model the best. In conclusion, the elaboration theory is composed of seven key components, the first of which, the elaborative sequence, makes it very unique. 
I hope you've enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.